watching God's Word for You Today program, an online Bible teaching ministry of Maranatha Baptist Church, Villamonte, Bacolod City, Philippines. This program is designed to make the time-tested, solid Word of God relevant to your life's need today. God's Word for You Today is found in Therefore set I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. Friend, you have to deal with the virus of discouragement. It is very dangerous and deadly if you fail to deal with it properly and the godly way. Remember, the virus of discouragement, the disease of discouragement can be cured. It is curable. You should remember that. Last Monday, we looked at the first three antidotes to or the cure for discouragement. The antidote to overcoming discouragement is here in the Word of God. Remember, our passes, in our passes, we learned that rest or relaxation of the mind and body is one of the bombs, so to speak, that God uses to cure the disease of discouragement. The second one is reorganization. Just as God gave Nehemiah the wisdom to unify the efforts of his workers, to scatter them out in small groups, and to rally them to work together as one. So God can give you the prudence to reorganize your messy life in order that you will be able to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. Third, the third cure to discouragement, a very contagious negative attitude, is remembrance of God. And we will continue with that thought today as the Lord doesn't want you to be blinded, paralyzed, and crippled by your circumstances. What should we remember about God? Ano ang kinanglanta dumdumo na nungod sa Diyos? Number one, remember, don't forget His providence and power in the past. Crippled with fear, Nehemiah reminded the people that the great and awesome God is on their side. They should remember that God fought for their fathers in the past when they were in Egypt and when they were delivered by Moses from the Egyptian bondage and when they were in the wilderness and when they fought to possess the promised land. God delivered them from their odd situations and from their powerful, otherwise powerful enemies. Number two, they should remember His presence. His presence with them in the present. Dumdumon nila nga Diyos kaupod nila sa presente nga panahon. And it takes genuine faith to see that God is with you in your troubles. Kinanglan sa ligan mo. Kinanglan sa ligan mo ang mga saad sang Diyos sa kasulatan. Jesus Christ promised His disciples in Matthew 28 verse 20, As you go and make disciples, as you make disciples as you are going, you should remember, I am with you always. I am with you always. Hebrews 13.5, this is the promise of God, not only for His people in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament, and His people right now. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Here, that's why Nehemiah exhorted the people that they don't need to be afraid. Hindi sila dapat magadlo. Why? Because God in His power and care will fight for them. There is no experience that you go through in your life as a follower of Christ that God doesn't go through 
with you. You just have to open your eyes and see God's closeness in the present. Open your eyes. He is with you right now. Third, remember, don't forget His promise for the future. God promised the Jewish people, those who hoped in Him, those who trusted in His covenant promises. He said in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So God said, I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will see you through this. I will see you through your circumstance or situation. Friend, get your mind off the discouraging circumstance and get your mind on the Lord. And please say, like the prophet Jonah in Jonah chapter 2 verse 7, when he was at the bottom of the sea in the belly of the great fish, he said, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. The fourth cure for discouragement is resistance. Resistance. Don't just give in to discouragement without a fight, without fighting a good fight. Nehemiah said in verse 14, Fight your, for your brethren. Fight for your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. Yes, resist discouragement. Resist the virus of discouragement. Remember why you are in this situation. You are in this endeavor for your family, for your sons and daughters. You are not in this. You are not in this endeavor just for yourself you are also in this for the welfare of your family and your children so the bible says for us in james chapter 4 7 and 8 we need to submit ourselves to god submit yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you draw nigh to god and he will draw nigh to you cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So look at what James is, James is saying here. He's saying to you, surrender your life to God. And then resist the devil. And what will happen? The devil will flee from you. Then you need to draw near, close to God. And he will draw near or close to you. How do you draw near to God? James has an answer to that question by giving up your sinful deeds, by acknowledging that you are doing something that is not pleasing to the Lord. You need to repent of that. You need to repent of your sins and you get your heart and mind right with God. The fifth and the last cure for discouragement is revival. Revival. Return to work. Return to work. Nehemiah said in verse 15, and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to not that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. So the Jews, after taking some time to rest, to reorganize, to regain strength, to resist the enemies, they resumed their construction work on the wall. Nagpadayon sila. They went back to work. What he has started doing in your life, and through you, as his child, he will surely finish it. What God has called you to do, he will enable you to do it through the power that he provides. He has given us his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to enable us and to empower us. So why should you be discouraged? Why? Stop being discouraged. Get back up. Bangon. Tindo. Kagpagpadayon sa paghimo, sa ginapahimo, sa imo, sa gino. Because there is still plenty of work to do before the Lord returns. That is God's word for you today.